Hello and welcome to Sparta Lines, your one-stop destination for the civil services preparation, UPSC, KPSC and other relevant examinations. In today's Hindu analysis, we have picked up some of the important articles which are important from your pre as well as your mains examination point of view. It can be important from your GS Paper 1, GS Paper 2 and GS 3 perspective. Let us try and understand what are these articles, how is it important from the examination point of view. So the first article is important from your GS 3 perspective which is economy. The article speaks about gig workers bill reading between the lines. The article speaks about one of the proposals made by the Rajasthan government with respect to the gig workers. So what we have to understand is this particular bill may be having its representation in the state of Rajasthan. But when it comes to the larger picture, it can also be used for other state level examinations as well as for the UPSC as well. This is important from your GS3 perspective that is economy. First, we have to understand what is the meaning of gig workers. Then we will also understand the provisions that have been envisaged in this particular legislation. We will also look at concerns of this legislation. First, who is a gig worker? Any worker who is not a permanent employee of a particular company, there is no employee-employer relationship per se that is established. Those workers who work for a part-time and are not the full-time employees of a particular company, those who may not derive some of the social security schemes and benefits are called as the gig workers. For example, let's say you are hungry. What do you do? You open your Zomato app, you open your Swiggy app and you start ordering food online. So someone comes to your doorstep and delivers the food for you. So the person who delivers this to you is called as a gig worker. Or let's say for example, a person who is not on the permanent payroll of a company, a person who is working for Amazon or a person who is working for a Flipkart, who is not a permanent worker of these companies, but delivers certain contents to you, you would have procured a particular product. When this person has procured this product, when you buy that particular product from Amazon or Flipkart, a person delivering that product to you may also be a gig worker. So who is a gig worker? A gig worker is a person who works on a daily basis. There is no established connection between the employer and employee. He may not be the permanent employee of that particular company. And such person who does not derive the benefits of the employer-employee relationship like the PF and other social security schemes and programs is called as a gig worker. We have now the state government of Rajasthan which has made a proposal for the gig workers where they say they're going to introduce the social security measures for these gig workers but the author in this particular case goes on to say that there are inherent problems with this particular legislation. What we have is the central government which had come up with what is called as the social security code of 2020. This code is also adapted by the Rajasthan government. So remember, why has Rajasthan government adopted similar provisions? That is because when it comes to the labor issues or the subject matter of labor, it happens to be a concurrent subject. What do I mean by concurrent subject? State government should be able to make the laws. Central government would also be able to make the laws. So remember, from the preliminary examination point of view, we have labor issues, labor as a subject matter, which is included in the concurrent list which can be very important from the preliminary examination point of view. What is the author trying to convey through this particular article? The author goes on to say, yes, the state government of Rajasthan may have adopted certain provisions with respect to the gig workers. This has a larger picture that they want to develop and empower these gig workers and at the same time also want to provide the social security schemes as well. But is it meeting the intended objectives and the vision of the Rajasthan government? No, says the author. This is where he draws number of examples and takes each of the provision to enlight and highlight those points which do not meet the intended objective. What are those points? Let's take a look into those points. The first point says that this is drawn largely on the code of the code of the Social Security 2022. The bill defines a gig worker as a person who performs work or participates in a work arrangement and earns from such activities outside of the traditional employer-employee relationship and who works on a contract that gives in a given rate of payment. 
it also defines an aggregator as a digital intermediary and includes any entity that coordinates with one or more aggregators for providing the services. So the first point that we have to understand in this particular legislation is who is a gig worker. Any person who is working for a company, he may be a contract worker that results in getting a payment on a daily basis. Such person will be called as a gig worker. So there is no traditional establishment of the employer and the employee, which means to say, let's say I am a person who is working for, let's say, Infosys or let's say I am a person who is working for, let's say, one of the Tata agencies. So when they are recruiting me, I have a specific period of time that I have to work for. I have to work for about eight hours or nine hours and I would also be given the PF as well. I would also be given insurance mechanisms like the health insurance where this health insurance is given to me to to my parents or let's say for example to me or my children and my wife so there is an establishment that is there is a person who is hiring me he is paying me a certain package this package may be 10 lakhs 20 lakhs 30 lakhs whatsoever it is so there is an established relationship and that particular relationship is for a period of time as long as I want to be in that particular company so there is a permanent relationship that is established between me who is an employee and the employer which happens to be the company but in this case, there is no such permanent relationship that is established between the employer and the employee. I work on a contract basis when it comes to the gig worker economy and ultimately I am paid on a daily basis or on a weekly basis. So there is no establishment of a permanent relationship between the employer and the employee and as a result, I may be paid the wages on a daily basis which is called as a gig worker. And it also defines someone called as an aggregator who happens to be a digital intermediary. Who is this in digital intermediary? Let's say for example, there is one of the applications. So this application is basically providing the person's services and at the same time, it is also a person which is acting as a repository. Let's say there is an application that is developed. So what do I want? I want one of a person to come over and uh, chop my hair, cut my hair. So what do I do? I go to urban company. So I as a person, I'm looking for services. So there is a person who is offering the services who happens to be a Baba. So what do I do? I go to urban company. So urban company as an example is an intermediary. So I as a person want to get my beard trimmed. So what do I do? I'm seeking for a service, but there is a person who is also offering the service that he would want to trim my beard he would also want to shave as well give it a particular look so on and so forth so the intermediary in this case happens to be urban company and who is the person who is offering the services it is the Baba who is the person who is wanting this particular service it is me so a digital connecting a digital service provider and a digital service seeker that person happens to be a digital intermediary so the article in this particular case goes on to say that yes they have defined the who the gig worker is who the intermediary is but it does not define and it still goes ahead with respect to the contractual employee so there is no establishment of the relationship between the employer and the employee and ultimately in few external issues they may not be paid the payments as well and in United States of America, the author also takes into picture United States of America is free from control of the company in terms of the performance of work in deciding working hours etc. In case it fails to do so, all benefits meted out to a full employee of the company should be extended to the delivery workers as well. So what is the author trying to say? If there is a company and this particular company in United States of America is regulating the working hours of that employee, the dear employee, you have to be in our company for 4 hours, 5 hours, 6 hours whatsoever it is so if there is an imposition if there is an articulation if there is a point where the, the employer is asking the employee to stick to a particular timeline for that particular work in that case they have to treat them equally to that of a permanent worker is such a presence is such a provision present in our 
details in the Rajasthan spill? No, since it is not there, this can lead to manipulation is the first concern. Similarly, in 2021, the UK Supreme Court ruled that Uber drivers must be treated as workers and not as self-employed. This definition has been integrated under 233 of B of the UK Employment Rights Act. So, we could have looked into several countries taken some of the positive outcomes added to it but now in the definition that has been given by the Rajasthan state provisions what it speaks of is a contract which ultimately feels that since the legislation is directly supporting it then these employees may not derive the benefits is the first major concern. The second major concern the author speaks is with respect to the ambit of the labor laws. By not defining the gig workers as employees, the bill is limited in its ability to integrate existing labor laws into its ambit. Agreeably, a few platforms in India do not have a provision of this, but such an approach runs the risk of converting crucial entitlements like occupation safety into benevolence as part of the aggregator. What do we understand by this? Let me give you an example. Let's say I am a person who is working for Swiggy. So you've ordered food. So what do I do? I pick it up from one of the restaurants. I take this and I ultimately deliver it to you. What if while I am traveling or a person is traveling from this restaurant to your place meets with an accident? In that case, is the company taking care of this individual? Is the company taking care of the health parameters of this individual? Is health insurance provided to this particular person? What if this person who is working for you delivering this particular product to the person, to another person who sought this service, meets with an accident while he is going and engaging in a particular program? So in this case, it is not covered, says the author. Even if it is covered, it is not acting as a legal mandate and companies treat it as a source of benevolence, as a source of magnanimity and not as a picture of provision of law. In this regard, Australia and New Zealand have brought about key changes in their law where the vocabulary no longer sounds employer or employee but rather a person conducting a business or undertaking and a worker in their place. The onus is on the PCBU to ensure health and safety of the worker while the workplace or anywhere else while working. So the premise is that the geek worker is working for the company indirectly because he is delivering the product of Zomato. Zomato may be an intermediary, Swiggy may be an intermediary or any other person who is working for an intermediary, he is delivering a good or a product or a service for acting indirectly as the representative of that particular company. So, he is delivering this product while he delivers the product. If something happens to him during this process, it is the responsibility of the company to take care of that individual. This Introduced in the legislation and this has been failed. In fact, there are a couple of articles which also say this concern which could have been recently, which could have been earlier addressed by the government of India was not addressed by the government of India, which could have been addressed right now by the Rajasthan government is yet not addressed leading to a major problem. So, the major problem is in 2022, we have the leading platforms in India which have secured zero in the Fair Work India ratings. So this is the second major concern. The third aims to create a database of gig workers wherein the details of all the workers onboarded or registered with a platform would be transferred to the proposed gig workers welfare board. This creates another problem. What is this article saying? That let's say there is a person A. This person A, if he is part of Swiggy, then he has to be part of this database. Let's say there is an individual B. This person B is part of, let's say, Zomato. He is working for Zomato. So, this person's name will also be in the welfare board. And let's say there is another individual C. He is working for, let's say, Swiggy or Zomato. And this person's name will also be part of the welfare board. So, if a person A is part of Zomato, working for Zomato, if there is a person B who is working for, let's say, Swiggy, now there is a person, there is a new company that is coming up, which is uh, 
a new company which wants people or it wants to employ people who are not working in any of these companies what what how will he do how will he understand whether a person is working for a or b or for another company he will go to this welfare board and as a result he'll see if a person is on the welfare board and if it is so he may not employ them and ultimately this entire per database which is acting as a repository may also go against an individual and ultimately he may not get the job as well so basically this welfare board will have a repository of all individuals who are working for a specific company but then this company can also see that this individual is working for so and so company and as a result they may not provide the job in the present situation and that happens to be the third major issue fourth the bill at its core aims to guarantee social security to platform based gig workers by constituting a representative welfare board and creating a welfare fund for them it brings in eight aggregators or primary employers based services under its ambit so what we will have is a representative welfare board as well as a welfare fund as well this welfare board will have a representatives it will also have representatives from the employer side it will also have representatives from the employee side as well these employee side representatives will be about 4 to 5 but look at the numbers of the aggregators it is 8 we will also have the uh, state representatives the bureaucracy which is also stepping into picture so despite these people there are four to five people who are representing the employees or the gig workers economy as well their voice will not be heard in fact this persons or these people who are working in the gig economy should have been far more as well so that their voice can be heard we already have the government representatives we already have the aggregators we already have the employers their numbers are far in excess and their numbers in comparison when you juxtapose them their numbers is comparatively less so it means their voice may not be heard as well all these issues could have been addressed by the Rajasthan government taking into the picture the earlier loopholes of the code of the social security but yet it is not fulfilled says the author so the Rajasthan government if it is coming up with such a legislation it can look into these parameters take the best of practices from the countries world over we have seen united states of america we have seen united kingdom we have seen australia we have seen new zealand if they can pick and choose the best practices and include them in their legislation that will be the best way forward says the author it is this that we have to understand with respect to this article now let's look into the next article in this article says reroute rail track through gibbon sanctuary the article here is important from the preliminary examination point of view one with respect to the gibbon sanctuary the other is with respect to the western hulock gibbons what we have to understand is that yes we will discuss the preliminary point of view but from the mains examination point of view what they are trying to say is that if there is a railway track that is passing by this should not be passing by this particular sanctuary and this will create a lot of problems there can be electrification there can be man animal conflict where a train may hit these animals as well and ultimately there is loss of the forest land on one side because there is infrastructural project and at the same time this can also lead to death of these species is another point of view now let's look at what is happening on the prelims examination front there are few important factors first is with respect to holangpur gibbon sanctuary it was formerly called as gibbon wildlife sanctuary or Holangappar Reserved Forest it is an isolated protected area of evergreen forest located in Assam it contains India's only gibbons the hulog gibbons and northeastern india's only nocturnal primate the bengal slow loris so remember this holangarpur gibbon sanctuary has the hulog gibbon which is present in this part when we speak about hulog gibbon it is native to eastern bangladesh northeastern india myanmar and southwest china hulogs are the second largest of the gibbons after siam they reach a size of 60 to 90 cm and weigh 6 to 9 kg in northeast india hulog is found south of brahmaputra and north bank areas east of dibang rivers it ranges into seven states covering arunachal pradesh assam manipur meghalaya mizoram nagaland and tripura these are some of the important pointers from the preliminary examination point of view 
there are three types of gibbons one happens to be western hulog gibbon second happens to be eastern hulog gibbon there is a third gibbon which is this gibbon which is third please put it on the comment section so the western hulog gibbon its iucn status happens to be endangered so remember this can be important from the preliminary examination point of view and when it comes to the eastern hulog gibbon its iucn status happens to be vulnerable all these species are covered under the schedule 1 of the indian wildlife protection act of 1972 how many schedules do we have in the Indian Wildlife Protection Act? What are these schedules? One is Schedule 1. There are other schedules as well. How many schedules do we have on the Wildlife Protection Act? Please put it on the comment section. Now, let's look into the next article. This article says 41.1% Narega workers out of the Aadhaar based wage system. This article basically goes on to say that when it comes to Narega, we have a couple of issues. What are these issues? One, there is a person who is working for this particular program. This happens to be unskilled program where 33% of these jobs have to be reserved for the women. Let's say for example, there needs to be digging of the new lake or there is construction of the road. So what is the original intent of Narega? So a person who is working in the agricultural sector for a specific period of time may not have any of the agricultural activities. So this person should not stay idle and at the same time he needs another source of income as well so the narega will provide this person who is seeking for a job for about 100 days a source of income and unskilled labor so he will roll himself to this particular program and ultimately he would be provided employment opportunities for the unskilled labor so this person will also have to be paid wages as well so what would happen there are a couple of cases when it comes to wage issues so let's say i am a person who have recruited i am asked to manage and i am a person who is a supervisory in that particular area so i as a supervisor will have to see if this particular person comes to the job or not if he is working according to my set established principles or not so i am a supervisor who is supervising who this individual is are, are they working according to the established plan so on and so forth and at the end of the day they will also be paid wages as well there are two ways of paying the wages one is no, normal way the other is based on what is called as the other based wage system what is this normal way let's say for example i give my account details the account details are entered and taken by the supervisor this is fed into the database so after i am working for a particular period of time i'll be paid a certain amount of money directly into my account why was this done earlier cash payments were being made but in number of cases it is the intermediaries or the supervisors or the brokers who used to take off or siphon off a lot of money in order to prevent it what we have is a present system where an account holder that is his account details will have to be given to the supervisor it will be entered into a database and he would be paid on a monthly basis or on a periodic basis to his account number but then what we also have is called as the other base system so in other base system a narega job card holder must link his bank account with the other the same account must also be connected to the national payments corporation of india so according to national payments corporation of india abps is a unique payment system which uses other number as a central key for electronically channelizing government subsidies and benefits in the other enabled bank accounts of the beneficiaries so i have to link my account the bank account with the other number integrate with it and also provide other kyc know your customer details so on and so forth once this is done how will it work i might have couple of advocates so the one where recently i have had the transaction where recently i have done some transaction in the banking system this will be taken into picture and the amount will be deposited because it is linked to the other as well so what is the advantage the advantage is that the person is getting the amount immediately it is integrated with other and at the same time there might be some accounts which might be dormant but then whichsoever is linked with the other whichsoever has the active transaction details of the bank the 
same will be picked up by the other and the account will be deposited with the money that they have worked for. So basically the other based wage system is what will be the future in order to prevent ghost accounts, in order to prevent that they get their money on time and at the same time this will also remove the corruption out of the system but what is the major issue there are a couple of issues like many people don't know what these kyc norms are there are also issues with the aadhaar system as well you know for the fact that the biometrics in aadhaar sometimes may not work as well so in this particular parameter if they are compulsorily coming up with aadhaar based wage system how can it be supportive there are people who may not also have aadhaar as well so what should happen to such people these are some of the concerns that are present which has to be overcome over a period of time is what is this article all about now let's look into the next article this article says cyclone frequency may rise over indian coast from the warming of the pacific ocean so the article here is speaking about one of the concepts called as the pacific decadal oscillation it is a particular geographical concept that takes place in the pacific ocean what is this pacific decadal oscillation this was coined in 1996 by steven hare at university of washington he along with his colleagues nathan mantu yuan robert mike discovered the pattern as part of the fish population fluctuations so what exactly is it this happens to be a long term ocean fluctuation of the pacific ocean so this long term ocean variations happens in a warm phase as well as the cool phase so there will be surface temperature sea water surface temperature which will be changed in the pacific ocean so how does this work this works on a decade process this is how it works let's say for example the sea surface temperature is taken into consideration sea level pressure would be taken into consideration surface wind risk and anomaly patterns will all be taken into consideration so on the basis of which a decadal census on the basis of which a decadal numbers would be collected and they would decide whether it is going to create an impact or not as we just discussed there are two phases one is what is called as the warm phase the other is what is called as the cool phase what is this warm phase when it comes to the warm phase the west pacific ocean becomes cool and the wedge in the eastern forms what is the cool phase it is characterized by a cool wedge of lower than normal sea temperature where in the eastern equatorial pacific so we have the normal temperature that exists so on the eastern side if on a comparative basis if the temperature falls on the eastern equatorial pacific that is what is called as the cool phase what is warm phase on the eastern side if it is comparatively warmer that is what is called as the warm phase so in this particular backdrop what we have is a sea surface temperature which changes it becomes warm it may also become cool warm in the eastern pacific region coolness on the eastern equatorial pacific region and ultimately these fluctuations that happen over a period of time whose number are predicted on a decadal level will what will cause more dot like conditions is what is this article all about so when we speak about how this will impact warm eras have been seen enhanced coastal ocean biological activity in alaska inhibited the productivity of the west coast of contiguous united states while cold pdo eras have seen the opposite north south pattern of the marine ecosystem productivity so what are the causes of this decadal specific decadal oscillation we do not have the prescribed crosses it is unknown yet scientists are discovering it day by day and the predictability of these climatic oscillations are yet not known as well however when we speak about what could happen this could create drought like conditions it can create cyclone like conditions another important point that we have to remember is what is the difference between this pdo that is the pacific decadal oscillation and the enzo when we speak about el nino la nina or its oscillations this happens on a annual basis but when it comes to the pdo the major idea is that it happens on a decadal process that is when it comes to el nino or la nina we have the significant impact felt on an annual basis 
but when it comes to the PDO, the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, there is fluctuation of the sea temperature, but its impact will have the larger impact, which means to say that happens on a decadal method. So we would not be able to witness the significant changes immediately, but this is a slow progress where we would be seeing it on a decadal level. So the changes happens once in 10 years, 20 years, so on and so forth. But when it comes to the El Nino or the La Nina, what we see is this impact happening on a yearly basis and this we will see when it comes to India having drought like conditions because of El Nino. We will also see significant rainfall because of La Nina. So what we have is the Pacific Decadal Oscillation which could significantly impact on a decadal process. Now let's look into the next article. This article speaks about sickle cell disease. What is a sickle cell disease? This happens to be a group of inherited red blood cell disorders that affect hemoglobin, the protein that carries oxygen through the body. So normally, red blood cells are disc-shaped. Remember, they are disc-shaped and they are flexible enough to move easily through the blood cells. But if an individual has sickle cell disease, red blood cells are crescent-shaped or sickle-shaped. These cells do not bend and as a result block the blood flow and this will create a lot of pain to that individual. The blocked blood flow through the body can lead to a serious problems like stroke, eye problems, infections, episodes of pain called as pain crisis. What is the issue? This happens to be a genetic disorder. So when we have these red blood cells, they are disshaped. So they will be able to move and there is a flow in our blood. But when it comes to persons suffering from sickle cell disease, since this happens to be a genetic disorder, a person will have this blood flow which is blocked by the sickle shape and as a result, there is no free flow of the blood. Because there is no free flow of the blood, this could result in pain for that individual. So what could happen? This person will feel a lot of pain and ultimately a person will have to withstand the pain as well. How do I overcome? This happens to be a lifelong illness. A blood and bone marrow transplant is currently the only cure for sickle cell disease but there are other effective treatments that can reduce the symptoms and prolong life. So what is that we have to do when there is pain? We have to drink a lot of water. We have to be adaptable in such a way that it shouldn't be too hot or too cold in that particular environment so that we do not feel the pain as well. We have to avoid places or situations which has high altitude, let's say for example mountain regions so on and so forth. Such regions can should be avoided if the pain has to be reduced and we have to avoid places where there are low oxygen levels as well. If such can be taken into consideration, the symptoms and these issues can be comparatively reduced. But the permanent cure is like the blood and the bone marrow transplant. Now let's look into the next article. This article here says that Indian Army signs deal for 130 tethered drones. What are these tethered drones? It is an unmanned air vehicle physically connected to a ground station. So basically you would have the UAVs or the drones which would be able to lift off and you would be able to control via the ground station. That is you would have a remote control. You would also have the control system where you would be able to control the drone system. But when it comes to tethered drone, what you will also have is a connection, a wired connection that is connected to the drone. A tethered drone comprises drones that come with the ground based tethered station and can be used for surveillance of targets beyond the line of sight for a prolonged period. They can also be launched in untethered mode for a certain duration to confirm input. So what is the significance of these tethered drones? The induction of such equipment will enhance the overall operational preparedness of the Indian Army. Drone tethers connect the drone to a power station. As we discussed, what we will have is a control system. What we will have is a wiring. They can be simply used for holding the drone in place and securing its hovering position. Let's say if you are flying a drone, it keeps hovering in and that particular area. It keeps swirling in that particular area. In order to control this hovering, when it is tethered, we would be able to control and see what exactly is happening in that particular locality. A predictable aerial presence is beneficial in unfolding situations such as festival, natural emergencies, crowd monitoring, so on and so forth. So even if it is tethered, as it circulates in that particular area, we would be able to see what exactly is happening in that area because it is all connected and we would be able to watch it in a precise way as well. These are some of the important articles that we have picked up 
for your Hindu analysis today. If you are liking these initiatives, please do like, subscribe to our YouTube channel and also share it with your fellow aspirants as well. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.